essentially an overlay is either placing layer 2 or layer 3 over a layer 3 core. The layer 3 core is known as the underlay. This removes a lot of drawbacks and scaling issues which we had with traditional layer 2 connectivity which used VLANs. The multi-tenant nature of overlays is designed to get away from these challenges, allowing you to build networks at a much larger scale. We have both layer 2 and layer 3 overlays. Layer 2 overlays emulate a layer 2 network and map layer 2 frames into an IP underlay. If you are emulating a layer 2 network, you have to somehow emulate layer 2 flooding behavior. This is the bread and butter of how layer 2 networks work, and that doesn't change just because you decide to create a layer 2 overlay. While layer 2 overlays encapsulate layer 2 frames into IP, layer 3 overlays map IP into IP. VXLAN is the most popular overlay type transporting layer 2 or layer 3 over an IP core. The end hosts are completely oblivious to any layer 2 or layer 3 tunneling mechanisms that is taking place and will always simply send an ethernet frame. As far as they are concerned, nothing has changed and their connectivity model remains the same. The underlay can consist of any architectural design, be it flat, hub and spoke or ring for example, but by far the most popular fabric is a leaf and spine architecture. The architecture of the overlay underlay model pushes complexity to the edges of the network where the overlay tunnels are created. The core is left alone to four packets as quickly as possible. There is usually very little complexity in the core and you might only see some basic quality of service or VLAN configurations. The idea is to always keep the core configuration as simple as possible. This has proved to be a very efficient way to scale networks, simple core and intelligent edge, similar to how the internet is built. The ability to stretch layer 2 across layer 3 boundaries allows the same subnet to be used across different physical locations. This preserves the same IP schema in both locations and eliminates the need to stretch a traditional layer 2 VLAN between two physical entities. Instead of stretching a fragile layer 2 island between two entities, we can now connect layer 2 islands with a layer 3 IP underlay. Layer 3 IP is a lot more stable than layer 2. Only IP transport is now required in a network core with no flaky layer 2 bridging. It also enables deployment of multiple layer 2 islands, meeting the multi-tenant nature requirements of large cloud infrastructures, again without the flaky shortcomings of layer 2 bridging.